Hello lads and chicken nuggets. October is over. We're doing a reading wrap up. I think I read 12 books this month. So that is a lot. And it was a pretty good month overall, wasn't it? Some absolute five star gems that I will never forget within these piles. And and I feel good about my October in general. Let's talk about some books, right? We're laid back today. I'm in my beanie. We're just, just talking about wrap ups, okay? In no particular order, let's start with The Friend. This is a beloved little novel that is essentially about grief and companionship and follows the story of a woman whose dearest friend dies of suicide and she is left to be the caretaker of her dog. The writing in this was sharp. I liked spending time with this character and seeing her companionship form with said dog, but I don't think it's gonna stick with me for a long time. I've already kind of forgotten about it. I give this a three out of five in the end. It was, didn't blow me away by any means, but it wasn't bad. It's worth your time, especially if you're in a space where you're dealing or working through grief. I'm not right now, so maybe that's why I wasn't super affected by this. It was good. Fever Dream. I've seen this floating around bookstagram mostly, quite a bit, and I thought I would give it a try. I started this last night actually on Halloween night, and I got about 75 pages in, and then I DNF'd it. <laughs> um, I think this is supposed to be like, a horror a horror thriller novel about kind of man-made ecological unwellness um i just couldn't really get into the pacing it didn't feel like super chilling to me and i wasn't really down to read more about carla or her son so i stopped reading it what a freeing experience i know some people really love this book but then i was looking on goodreads after i dnf'd it and i saw a few people i really trust only gave it a three star so i was like okay cool i'm not alone like this can't pick up that rapidly at the end that i would like fall in love with it read intimations by zadie smith which is a collection of essays written during the early months of lockdown and the coronavirus and was a slim kind of collection about zadie smith's inner monologue and how she was navigating what that felt like i didn't love this i don't think it was super strong it felt it's it's very self-reflective and very encompassing of what zadie smith's worldview is which i mean i think she's like a professor at nyu no i don't she's a professor at some acclaimed university in new york city and it just felt like kind of rooted in an academic view of trying to understand like a great personal tragedy that didn't really affect her at the end of the day i thought some of the insights were good but it didn't stick with me like at all um and i think zadie smith's a great writer so i don't know like maybe this is one of the examples where publishing with that immediacy and trying to get out a piece of a collection sooner than later um suffers I felt like this this maybe could have marinated more and uh, would have been more interesting to read maybe a year from now or so but I also like I also like the idea of publishing in the in the immediacy of the crisis so people can have something to accompany them lukewarm lukewarm for me milk fed by Melissa Broder Scribner sent this to me I reached out to get an arc because I love Melissa Broder I really enjoyed this book it is dark and grotesque and hilarious and cuttingly true. I think this book in particular has a lot of content warnings around any type of disordered eating, anyone who suffers with eating disorders. Uh, if that is you, I would skip to when I am not holding up this book anymore so we can chat, chat more. Um, but essentially this follows Rachel and Miriam who are both Jewish women. Miriam is Orthodox Jewish and kind of explores the idea of hunger both 
appetite wise and sexually and I really liked uh, reading about Rachel Miriam's relationship. I felt for both of them at different times. I think Melissa Broder is so good at writing about sexual relationships and this is this is no exception to that. Queer, weird, kind of cheeky, lots of interesting lots of interesting things about like LA culture and religious identities and just a new approach of looking at food and how that is just like a red line through how we move through the world. I liked it. You are engulfed in flames by David Sedaris. This is a really good David Sedaris actually. I think this might be my favorite now um, outside of Calypso. I think if, I think if you're a new David Sedaris reader, I might, I might do this and then Calypso for best intro because this has a good back and forth between kind of before he was an established famous writer and then his book tour kind of synopsises. I love David Sedaris. I'm almost done. I think I just have like the Santa Land Diaries left, which is upsetting. I'm not really interested in that, but I'm gonna have to read it. From library books, Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. I did not like this at all. It felt very commercial to me in a way that didn't I, I I didn't feel like Kevin Wilson wrote this thinking that the reader would enjoy more nuance if that makes sense. Uh, essentially this is a magical realism book about um, two little kids who inexplicably burst into flames whenever they're upset and a babysitter who is a caregiver to them trying to navigate like her own tumultuous childhood and lack of parental love and trying to be a stand-in mother figure for them as well so it was like very readable i sped through this while we were camping but it wasn't like good you know very lukewarm a very three-star book severance by ling ma a lot of people this this book is about a virus that oh <laughs> Josh. This book is about a, a virus that decimates the world's population uh, and also kind of about millennial working conditions and our identity pillars that we build upon being career oriented. I really like this. I think it was sharp and like funny and very uh, foreboding, if you will. It does kind of teeter towards murkier ends of not goodness <laughs> towards the end of the book, but uh, I really liked the beginning and kind of setting the stage for how she's navigating moving through the rest of America with her little troop of survivors and the twist, the twist at the end, if you know what I mean. I read Nevada by Imogene Binney. I forget where I even saw this. Oh, this was actually recommended to me through the Storyographs algorithm, which is uh, a new app that's trying to be a competitor to Goodreads, which I'm all for. And the synopsis looked interesting, so I decided to pick it up. It essentially tells a story of Maria, who is a young trans woman living in New York City, and she's trying to stay true to kind of her leftist anarchist punk beliefs while also trying to grow up and work a job and pay her bills. This book is very funny and self-aware and the kind of corners of queer communities that it speaks directly to I think are really important. Uh, the, the last half of the book though, like structurally from I guess a stylistic and formal point of view totally goes downhill. The first like 100 pages are so strong and then after that it's like where are we going? <laughs> uh, I think this could have used a, a stronger editor if you will but it's kind of from like a little indie press. Um, I liked it. If you are looking to read a story about a trans woman I would recommend this one. It's more joyful than it is not. Parakeet. I don't even have words for this book. I read this because I saw Matthew 
just like give a baby blurb that it was his favorite book of the year and i really trust his taste so i picked it up immediately and i have to agree it was incredible to put it simply it is the story of an unnamed narrator who is called the bride and she is navigating the week up until her wedding day and it's psychological and surreal and the writing is so cutting and sharp and strong i love this book i love this book it's weird it's a weird kind of chaotic dance between reality and unreality that you don't really know what's going on at all times but once you sink down into that flow i think it really pays off and i loved it there's a a, a little magical realism in this book but i think it serves a deeper purpose than just being fantastical it's psychologically fantastical if that makes sense i love this book if you care about trauma family dynamics marriage societal expectations familial expectations being a human being navigating other people's expectations of you in general read it read it all my booktube friends have to read this and tell me what you think i think we're all gonna love it so sad today a collection of essays by melissa broder uh i loved this i remember following this twitter account like 10 years ago or whenever that was and thinking it was really funny and i just put it together that it was melissa broder's twitter account funny snarky dark observational writing about sex and love and lust and the internet and kind of anxiety and depression i really like this i laughed out loud a lot and kiki read it too and he also really liked it so thumbs up so i haven't finished reading this yet because it does require a lot of your brain it's not something that I want to read casually and I haven't been in the mood last week to not read casually if that makes sense but this is The Passion of New Eve by Angela Carter. So far this is like the weirdest most lyrical dystopian little book about the apocalypse and has some really funny strong writing about kind of gender expectations and sexuality in general i'm really liking it so far i'm almost done with it i can guarantee i can recommend it uh i liked it it's good thank you karen last but not least motherhood by sheila hetty oh my god if you are a person who thinking about procreating and not procreating and what is lost and what is gained in that decision and want to kind of like hunker down and just into the subconscious of a woman in her mid-30s who is also making those decisions and how it affects the rest of her life look no further friend i think it's just gorgeous and i like work about voluntary childlessness because I think it's important to have that represented. I think that's a choice so many more people are going to be making in future generations as the planet's future demise and apocalypse becomes more and more imminent. And it is clear that it is not sustainable to bring kids onto this place anymore. So thinking about the other places of joy and other ways to be a mother besides birthing a person is really cool. I really liked this. It's very psychological and philosophical and moody. Moody, moody, moody gender weirdness, you know? So weird. I can't believe people can have kids. It's, it's the weirdest. Well, that was my October, everyone, as I disappear into the sunlight. It was a great reading month, really. I still feel a little disconnected from the youtube thing but i might try to vlog again next week because i do like vlogging i think i'm just a, a, a vlogging kind of lad uh but like a tag video i haven't really been up for it lately uh tell me what you are reading tell me what your november looks like i know it's non-fiction november um i do have multiple non-fiction books that i would love to get a head start on so maybe that will be my next video a tag video which i just said i wasn't in the mood to do but we'll see great let me do the shot let me do the shot look goodbye